Hi, I'm Michael Gracie, the director of Benaman. How is it, after three, four years, finally everybody gets to see this, all the hard work that you put into this? I know, it's crazy. This is actually six years. So wow. It's six years of work. I know. I, I thought after Showman that I would get better at the time it takes to make these films. Uh, this was quite a marathon. Um, so getting in front of an audience is just the best. It's actually, you know, um, seeing it, particularly in the film festivals, it's it's such an amazing audience to watch it with because they they're very vocal and they are film lovers. Right. And so it's it's actually it's such a privilege to be here. And can you talk about how, you know, no stranger to musical music, how important that is for you to bring it into films and what that does for everybody and the feeling that they get from that. Yeah, I mean, I, I really love musical format in terms of music storytelling. It doesn't necessarily have to be a break into song musical where someone starts right. singing, but I just, I love the power of music. I love the way it makes you feel. I love it, the goosebumps it gives you. Um, and so any way where you can do storytelling and music's involved, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very keen on. I, it just, it, it just thrills me. Uh, when it's done well. And, you know, that can be a film like, you know, Tarantino's films are music driven. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a, a traditional but, musical. But, uh, but I'm always drawn to stories that have a strong musical presence. And this is very unique in our choice to, you know, make our main person a monkey. Can you talk about that? And like, cause it's like musical art. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it came out of wanting to find a unique way into the film, you know, wanting to find a unique um, perspective and not um, sort of have that issue that you have when you have someone playing uh, a character that people know where subconsciously in your head you're constantly questioning, oh, he looks a bit like Robbie there, oh, no, he doesn't look like Robbie there, oh, the actor looks like the actor there, but he doesn't look like Robbie. It, it, all those questions, I, they sort of take you out of the film. So I was just very keen to try and find a different way into the story. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> What's with the monkey? And I, to do that, I went back to the original recordings that I did with Robbie, where I just listened. And time and time again, he would refer to himself as a performing monkey. And I just thought, that's an interesting... It's an interesting take when he's the one telling the story. So rather than tell the story from the perspective of how we see Robbie Williams, wouldn't it be great to tell the story from the point of view, point of, view of how he sees himself? And can you talk about the discussion like, hey, we're going to do this with the monkey. Are you ready for that? Can you tell uh, how that a, went down? It was a pretty short conversation. <laughs> I kind of just said, if you were an animal, how would you see yourself? And, and he smiled and he said, a lion. And then I kind of went, really? And, and after a beat, he said, well, more like a monkey. And this is the, this has a lot of music involved. What are you currently listening to? Oh, really good question. I mean, I've been listening to um, I've been listening to like soundtracks a lot. You know, okay. um, like the Mission, um, all that jazz. Uh, I've just been yeah, I've been listening to Cabaret. <laughs> just, yeah. They all blend in there. I know. <laughs> it's a weird mix at the moment. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a eclectic mix. And this is a movie. What is a perfect movie snack for this film? What's a perfect movie snack for Better Man? Wow, that's a really good question. I mean, to me, the Choc Top is the classic. If you can have an ice cream while watching Better Man, um, yeah, I, I don't know why I prefer that over popcorn on this one.